I am your hostess, Ellie Molina. I'm an intuitive, a psychic. I am an author and the creator of the Psy Kids Academy, a magical place where children and their adults can tap into their inner magic while raising consciousness. And to learn more about Psy Kids, head on over to www.psikidsacademy.com, Psy Kids Academy. And download your free 16-page brochure titled, What If? Six Ways to Help Your Child Tap Their Inner Magic. Now, the thing about this, six ways to help your child tap their inner magic, this is not just only for children. This is for us as well, because we all have that child still within us. We have all ages tucked inside of our bodies. Anyway, head on over, check out SciKidsAcademy.com. It's got a treasure trove of information worth looking into. I'm going to talk about something that is happening right now on in Western culture. I cannot speak for other cultures, you know, other than the West right now. But what is going on right now is something known as the Great Resignation, also known as the Big Quit. According to NPR, last week, this is just a week ago now, uh, and I'm quoting, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics announced that 4.3 million Americans, or 2.9% of the entire workforce, quit their jobs in August. This was a record-breaking month, piggybacking on previous record months. The great resignation is real, and it can be seen across virtually all industries. Now, I'm quoting that from NPR. So now, if you haven't heard of the great resignation, now, you know, this perhaps has piqued your curiosity, because I am not really somebody who follows the news a lot. I have a belief system that we want to be very careful about the information that we put into our into our awareness and into our consciousness. And I also believe that we need to know what's going on. So if you're currently driving a car and you've noticed that gas prices are have gone up considerably and you've noticed that not only have gas prices gone up, but the food prices have gone up. And if you've noticed that there have been uh, big gaps in the supply chain, so you may want to start asking yourself, what's going on? So these were questions that I asked myself, like, what's going on? Where's the food in the supermarket? And why are people not able to purchase cars right now? And why is gas so high? So I started asking myself a lot of questions. And there are some very, very obvious answers. And then there is some not so obvious answers. And I came across then through these, through my inquiry upon this article called The Great Resignation. So now, what does it mean to be resigned? Well, the the dictionary defines resignation as the act of retiring or giving up a position or the acceptance of something undesirable but inevitable. Now, that one really got to me. So you see, we are accepting undesirable things as inevitable. Really? If this is part of the social consciousness that's getting programmed into us, this has really big ramifications. So I'm going to come back and talk about that. So now NPR started asking economists and pollsters, like, what's going on? Is it the generous amount of the government benefits encouraging people to quit? Well, evidence is suggesting that that's not it. And then There was the Texas AMN and M psychologist, Anthony Klotz, who predicted and coined the term the Great Resignation back in May. And this is where he was saying that people were having pandemic epiphanies. So more and more workers were departing from their jobs for, quote unquote, greener pastures. And then research was done by um, UC Berkeley economist Ulrika Malmendir, and she suggests that there's something existential happening behind the great resignation, and that the pandemic and the rise of remote work has changed the way we view our lives and the world. 
And this now goes into a much larger study, if you're interested in this, it's from the National Bureau of Economic Research um, on Exposure, Experience, and Expertise, Why Personal Histories Matter in Economies. And then she talks about neuroscience and um, how research is showing right now, especially true for kids, that childhood trauma can profoundly affect people's outcomes as adults. Okay, we agree. Uh, this includes putting them at risk for substance abuse, criminal and antisocial behavior, dropping out of school, chronic health problems, et cetera, et cetera. And these are now um, being predicted as effects of the pandemic and that the legacy of forced teleworking, homeschooling, dramatic social and economic changes are going to continue to shape our choices even after the, the virus danger goes away and that many of us will be looking for new jobs and they we will be resigned. And so when I heard, when I started reading that, like, um, to look at to look at resigning in ourselves like giving up and resigning because the collective consciousness or not even the collective consciousness media some media some somebody who has been doing research has decided and coined a phrase calling it the great resignation and now we're living into this vocabulary we're resigning ourselves to the situation we're resigning ourselves to higher gas prices we're resigning ourselves to lack of food um, on our shelves we're resigning ourselves to feeling depressed and gloomy we're resigning ourselves to that really um human beings have a tendency for survival and we have a tendency to go against obstacles the question now becomes are we going to allow ourselves to become influenced by the media and by articles and by conversations that these are fear-based telling us and telling our children that we're going to be in a situation that we have to resign um, and accept resignation as what's next for us so that, okay, we understand that we're going to resign ourselves to higher gas prices. We're going to resign ourselves to food shortages. We're going to resign ourselves to homeschooling for the rest of our lives and being in the state of fear because it is inevitable. So this raises a whole lot of questions right now. And we want to look at how we are allowing, and I say we are allowing ourselves because if we buy into this, we are allowing ourselves to be manipulated. We are allowing ourselves to be basically controlled through fear. You know, human beings have a tendency to be fear-based. And so we look at this picture, it's how we've been conditioned. So we look at this picture and now we're stuck in this point of view. Oh my God, you know, we're not safe. We're going to go into resignation. We're, this is how it's going to be. This is the way that life is going to be for the next 10 years where it's all dictated to us. Not so, just really, really not so. We get to, and this is really going to lead into like other stuff. We get to like, I'm going to use the word wake up, but you got to be careful because waking up was termed by Gurdjieff and not the community that it is now known as woke. This is a whole other topic of conversation that we are just not going to touch today. Only to wake up is, according to Gurdjieff, the um, philosopher and um, like Eastern guru from the 1800s. Basically, he was a Russian philosopher, Armenian, as a matter of fact. And he created um, a school of thought known as the Fourth Way later. And in this, Gurdjieff talked about how the human being tends to go into a state of unconsciousness. We go into, he didn't have neuroscience vocabulary, but we go into habitualization. So we go into habit. We stop 
thinking for ourselves. Everything becomes routine. And then suddenly something happens where we become conscious and aware. And that is where we wake up and then we go back to sleep. And so that is where this term awakening comes from. The awakening is to wake up from this state of sleepy unconsciousness. And that is what we are in right now if we allow ourselves to be programmed by this great resignation, the big quit. Actually, it's a fabulous opportunity right now to take a look at institutions that are old and outdated, that are not working. Historically, we know that the educational system is outdated. It is an antiquated institution. It teaches children what to think, not how to think. All critical thinking skills are removed and we the children are taught what to think not how. The questions are formed. Even the teachers are taught what to teach, not how to teach, not how to engage it and make it more interesting. It gets shut down. And this is not something new. This happened already back in 2008 when I make a, made a conscious decision to leave education based on, based on a reprimand that happened to me because I had asked the children to read out loud. And then an educator happened, not an educator, an administrator happened to walk in on her, one of her, you know, daily checkups and walked into my classroom. I was teaching English language arts at that time, New York City. She walked into the middle school classroom and saw kids were actually reading out loud. Well, then I was called into the office later and told reading out loud is no longer accepted in our school and in our district because it encourages children to feel self-confident in uh, not self -con self conscious about their pronunciation abilities. So therefore we are now telling you, not even asking you not to, we're telling you that if you do not want to get written up, you know, get in trouble. Here I am, an adult, and I'm going to be teaching for over 30 years, and I'm going to get in trouble by the administration because I'm not following the protocol because children are actually reading out loud. Well, you know, even with my psychic abilities, I can't hear into their heads how they're pronouncing those words and if they even know them. And if we don't read out loud or we don't let anybody know that we can understand a word, how are we going to improve our reading abilities? So, you know, it was just, that was just part of the one little part of the reason why I left. And again, this brings us into the institutionalized way of looking at education. So accepting, circling around, going off on a tangent and yet coming back, allowing ourselves to accept what others are telling us, or they're convincing us and they're looking to fix us and they're looking to force an outcome on us. These are old ways of communicating. And with all the knowledge that is available to us right now in psychology and on the planet and in the spiritual community, we know that we do not have to accept other people's limited ways of looking at the world or accept their programming of how we see the world. It is up to us right now to increase our knowledge, increase our self-awareness so that we can say no to conversations as the great, the great resignation. We're all going to quit and we're going to resign when this can be a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for us right now to create something new. Remember Buckminster Fuller said, you can't break down the old. You've got to create the new to replace the old. And this is the opportunity to do that. Okay, things are not working. People are getting resigned because they've been told that they're getting resigned. Well, go create something new. So you don't want to work for a company at a minimum wage. Go create something new. Create something that will be of benefit to yourself, to society, and to humanity, to the culture. World of opportunity is waiting for us right now if we no longer accept this big quit, the great resignation, that we need to become resigned because it is inevitable. Not true. Who said that? One man, a psychology man, and it got picked up in the media. All right. Anyway, um, thank you all for listening. And um, it is my intention that I don't get banned from anything because 
Um, right now, there is part of this counterculture where everybody who does not say what is in accordance to the woke world is getting shut down. All sorts of contrary views are being shut down. And that's something else we want to start to look at. Where is our freedom of speech? And that now will be picked up by the algorithm. And I will leave that for another day and another week. I thank you all for being here today and listening and being a part of this podcast, sending you all love and blessings. Remember, you can reach out at any time. And if you're interested in scheduling a session with me, just say that you are um, have been on the podcast or heard the podcast, and that will give you 20% off of any of my um, readings um, for your next reading. Okie doke. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful week and a happy full moon. Love and blessings to you all.